YouTube Official Gaming Network and welcome to episode 12 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we created our player, we implemented keyboard input into our game and we actually made our player move. This episode we're going to be implementing collision detection into our game. Now before I actually start the episode, uh, I'm just going to explain. Uh, because, I, because I follow uh, OpenGL 3D tutorial uh, myself, one episode comes out each week, which is the sort of the same way I do, and uh, I think that's a little too long to wait. So what I'm doing is that every Wednesday or Tuesday, if you live in the West, is the first episode for the week, and the second episode for the week is Sunday or Saturday if you live in the West. So it's two episodes a week. I think it's better because I just reckon one week is too long to wait, and I don't want to keep you guys hanging. So. Yeah, I thought, and I have a lot of time on my hands, so I thought, why not? So the first steps to collision detection is to create a block that we want to collide with. So we're going to create one right now. In our tile package, we're going to click New, New Class, and we're going to call it Wall. And because it's in the tile package, we want to type Extends Tile. And we're just going to go... Add the constructor and implement the right methods, the render and tick method. Alright, let me just delete this. Alright, and I thought let's make the wall red, so we up g dot set color, color dot red. You guys have done this before, you should know what we're doing. G dot fill rec zero zero um whoops my bad. X Y width height. My bad spell height wrong. And we need to import color. So now in our game class, we're going to type handler, my bad, handler dot add tile, because the wall is a tile, new wall. So I'm going to put it at 200, 200, and we want the width to be 64 by 64. So we'll make it. We'll make it solid. We'll go id dot wall, then handler. And because we haven't created an id dot wall, we have to go into our id enum and make a wall. All right. We just need to import wall. All right, and if we uh, run our game, and there you go. As you can see, we have our wall, but we can't actually collide with it yet because we haven't implemented collision detection. So another step to making collision detection is to actually creating our collision boxes. And to create our collision boxes, which will be top, bottom, left, right, we're going to use this thing called rectangles. So we're going to go into our entity class and we're going to make a rectangle method. So we're going to get public rectangle get bounds. And because it's a rectangle method, we have to return a rectangle. So, in here we're going to return a new rectangle. We're going to have to uh, pre-make a rectangle here, then we'll return, return rectangle. We're just going to return a brand new rectangle. So we're just going to create some brackets and uh, return new rectangle. Actually, I'm going to type get bounds top. Or actually, I'm going to type get bounds and then we'll do get bounce top, bottom, left, right, and you'll see after. So we're just going to return a new rectangle, x, y, width, and height. So x, y being the starting positions, and width and height being the width and height of the rectangle. So we need to import rectangle. And there you go. So now we're going to create public rectangle, get bounce top. So we're going to type public rectangle, get bounds top. So we're going to return a new rectangle, then our starting position will be x plus 10, 
and uh, our starting Y position will be our Y, like usual. Now, the width is going to be width take away 20. Actually, uh, for get bounds, I'm going to type get X and get Y instead. Alright, just going to copy that. Alright, there we go. And we're going to type, then we're just going to type, uh, for our height, we'll just make it 5. Alright, so I'm going to type public rectangle get bounds bottom. And we're going to turn return another new rectangle. Actually, we really can just copy this. Alright. And uh, and for our y this time, we're going to type get y plus width take away five. All right, and that'll be get bounds bottom. So public rectangle get bounds left. Turn new rectangle. Our starting x will be x as usual. Then our starting y will be get y plus ten. So then our width will be 5 and our height will be height minus 20. So we're just going to pretty much do the same thing. Copy paste, change it to get bounds right. And return a new rectangle, but get x will be get x plus width take away 5. And I just realized because it's on y, it needs to be get y plus height in get bounds bottom, not get y plus width. That was a mistake. So why we use get bounds for the whole entity and then we use get bounds top, get bounds bottom, and get bounds left, get bounds right. So we use get bounds where it doesn't matter if it's on the left, right, top or bottom. Like it doesn't matter which side it collides with. But when we use get top, get bounds bottom, get bounds left, get bounds right, we want to be specific on which side we collide with which is very important for colliding into things like walls. So I'm just going to go public rectangle get bounds. We're going to copy that, go into our tile class, and then we're going to paste. All right. So now we're going to go into our player class, and this is where we actually implement the collision. We've created the collision boxes. Now we're going to implement it. All right. So here we're going to type for every so for every tile in in the handler's tile linked list. So now we're going to type if t dot solid, and we're going to put an exclamation mark, which means if t isn't solid, then we're going to break, like we did in our switch. Break is for for loops and switches, and return is for hold methods. So if it is solid, it'll continue the for loop. So we're going to type if t dot get id is equal to id dot wall. Then we're going to check. If get bounds top, and remember to put a brackets because it's a method dot intersects dot intersects t dot get bounds, and we're gonna create some curly brackets. And if bounds top does collide with t dot get bounds, we're gonna set val y equal to zero. And now y will equal to t dot get x plus width. So we're gonna copy and paste. We'll do that same with get bounds bottom. But we're just gonna remove the plus width on the ends. So now we type if get bounds left dot intersect intersects t dot get bounds then x will equal to oh my bad I just realized a um, mistake I made it all needs to be y I'm always stuffing up I do not know why I'm just I'm a bad typer today sorry about the inconvenience z for x equal to zero and x x will equal to t dot get x plus t dot width. 
I just realized we need to put t.width in case and t.height in case the uh, width of our tile that we're colliding with is, isn't is the same as our width value. So now we're going to do the same for if get bounds right dot intersects with t.getBounds. I'm just going to remove the plus t dot width. So now if we actually run our game, it should work. Alright, let's try. Alright, so... Whoa. Alright, I stuffed up there, but the bottom works. Let's just see if the right works. Yeah, right works. But top and bottom is... I mean, top and left is stuffing up. Mm, must have made a mistake. Okay. Uh, I'll just figure out the mistake, then I'll come back to you guys. Alright guys, I figured out the problem. So, in our get bounds top method, we're going to copy plus t.height. We're going to paste it next to our t.getY in our get bounds bottom, and we're going to change the plus to a minus. And we're going to do the same for plus t.width. I'm going to go minus t.width, or subtract t.width. So now if we try it, as you can see, collision detection works on all sides. Alright, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. Next video will be in, uh, I think, four days. See you guys soon. Bye.